Hello, bookworms! Today I'm here to do my review for Cricket Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Six of Crows duology. I almost said the Grisha trilogy, which is not true. Same world, but different, uh, different plots. So as with my other book reviews, the beginning half of this video will be spoiler free and then the latter end will be very spoilery and gushy because there's a lot that happened in here. It might actually be a tiny bit spoilery if you have not read Six of Crows, but if you have, then you're good. Okay, so Crooked Kingdom, um, it takes up right where Six of Crows leaves off. We have Kaz and the gang. They need to um, outsmart Van Eck, who has crossed them in their deal uh, with the first book. So they have this whole mission, and as always, Kaz is just a mastermind at everything. Like, he's constantly one step ahead. He's a fascinating character to read about, especially because you can tell that he cares about these people, but also he makes sure that he doesn't get too close because he puts on this front like he doesn't care, but like, actually, he totally cares. So it's just really enjoyable reading reading about him yet again. One of my favorite aspects of this book is that we also got Wyland's perspective, and Wyland was my favorite character in the first book, so for him to have his own chapters with narrative, that was like so, so exciting to me. Um, I was so invested in him and Jesper. Those were like the two, the two characters that I really loved the most. Those of you know that I did enjoy Six of Crows very much, but I didn't love it as much as other people. This book I loved so much. I don't know why it was, but I just was so much more into Crooked Kingdom than I was into Six of Crows. I don't know if it's because I was already familiar with the characters or the ending just got me really excited, but I really, really loved this book like way more than the first book. So there's a ton of character growth within this novel. Every single character is so just well developed and has their own like unique personality and outlook and background. It's amazing that Lee Bardugo was able to craft these characters and have such a diverse group and yet have them all work together and also have the reader be able to differentiate one from the other like so easily. Um, you never, never question like who is the one that is telling the story because the, the narratives flip obviously between chapters, but it's very easy to tell like who it is that is telling you what's going on because they are just so well developed. The ending was so amazing. Like it was just the perfect way for all of the storylines to, uh, to close out and just for, there was a resolution to everything and it was just so great. Um, I really, really loved it. There were so many like emotional moments and I I just was so invested in this book. So that is the end of the spoiler free section. And now I'm gonna get into spoilers for Crooked Kingdom. So if you have not yet read this, then bye. Okay, so now I'm starting the spoiler spoilery section. The first thing that I wanna talk about, because obviously it's probably the thing that is on most people's mind is poor, Matthias. I did not see that coming. I had anticipated that probably one person from the crew wasn't going to make it because they had like, like to pull off this entire thing perfectly just seems unrealistic. But then also that's why it was so much more shocking when he did die because, okay, so they complete the entire thing. Like they, they pull off their whole scam, they outsmart Van Eck, everything is totally in their favor, and you're like, okay, they did this, like, everyone is great, everything is fine, and then, nope, like, right at the end, Matthias is killed by a soldier of, I can never say the word, like, a Fjordan, <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna try. So he's killed by a soldier who tells Matthias that he is a traitor to his nation, and Matthias tells him that there's so much that he doesn't know and that he doesn't need to be afraid. Um, and it's just so heartbreaking because Matthias was, he was killed by his past self, which was so powerful and so sad. And like to have seen Matthias's um, 
character arc, like, over the two stories. He started out as such a hateful, um, like, spiteful person, but it's because he was bred that way. He was taught to hate. He wasn't innately a hateful person. And to see him change and to go from that to somebody who is accepting and willing to work with tons of people and trying to do good things, that was just, like, so heartbreaking. And then for him to, like, to try to explain to the younger person, which if if that had been him as a young person, he also would not have listened to this so-called traitor. So that was just such a powerful and like, oh my gosh, I could, I was crying. I couldn't believe that that happened. Oh, and then Nina couldn't save him because she didn't have Perem and then he didn't want her to take it. And then also I think the fact that he wouldn't even tell them who it was that shot him shows that like, he just wants to promote this piece and he wants people to be able to work together. And that was really, really, like a really powerful message. And he wants Nina to go and to try to educate all of those soldiers and try to get them to do good things in their future. And like, that is his legacy. And it's just so amazing. Another one of my favorite things in this story is that we know that Jesper, uh, made a really big mistake um, in the first book. He told people um, that he was going to be doing this job. That was a big deal. It was gonna, he was gonna come into a lot of money and he was gonna be able to pay all of his gambling debts. So there was this really powerful moment with Inej because Kaz basically tells her like, you know, it's Jesper's fault that you got captured because he let the cat out of the bag that we were doing this big thing and people just put the pieces together. And he goes to apologize to her and she talks about how in her, um, like from her heritage in her land, people don't say, I'm sorry. They say like that their action will not be echoed. And I just thought that was so beautiful because the sentiment behind it is that they realize that they've made a mistake and they don't want to do that again. So they're saying the action won't be echoed because they're going to make a conscious effort going forward not to do anything similar to that again. And Jesper is very honest and he says that he can't say that yet, but he really wants to get there because obviously he is deeply flawed and as all of these characters are, which is part of why they're just so endearing. But I just thought that was such a beautiful way to apologize for things and I just I think I'm probably gonna think of that forever like going forward anytime that I'm making an apology to somebody or someone's apologizing to me like it just I just love the way that that was written I think it's beautiful then oh my gosh so there is a part where okay so I've said like numerous times that Wylan and Jesper are my favorite and they were my like my OTP ship in this series. I just wanted them to be together more than anyone else. So there's a part in the story where um, Jesper goes into this room and it's actually, I can never say his name, Kawhi Yolbert. I, I definitely completely butchered that and I apologize, but he is disguised and he thinks that it is Wylan and he kisses him. And I was just like, no. And then of course Wylan walks in and I'm just like, this is horrible. I immediately had to text Cassie and I was like, something really bad just happened. I'm really upset because we were actually buddy reading this together, but I was a little bit ahead of her. So I told her like, I couldn't even tell her all of my feelings because I couldn't spoil it for her, but I really needed emotional support at that point. Um, so that was like devastating to me, but obviously that was resolved as well. And I also really loved how accepting Jesper's father was of their relationship. He, you know, he had a private conversation with Wylan and told him like, I don't know if my son is good for you, but I know that you are good for him and I want the best for him. Um, so he just basically like, just gave him that like seal of fatherly approval, which is something that Wylan never had because he basically has the worst father in the world as we learn like during this whole story. The fact that his father told him that his mother was dead, but then actually he has her living in this like mental institution. That was a complete shock to me. I did not see that coming. And it just like cemented what an awful person he is. He was the main villain of this story and he was just, I just hated him. So I was really glad to see him get what was coming to him in the end. He did not deserve anything that he had in his life. And I'm glad that 
that Wylan inherited everything that he should have. I also really liked in this book how they constantly pointed out that these people were so young and like other people that were interacting with them were like, you're like a teenager because it's very easy to forget that just with all of the the things that they've gone through and all of like the impossible schemes that they've been trying to pull off. Um, so I really appreciated that fact of it as well. Oh my gosh. And then the scene where Kaz and Inej kiss for the first time, that was absolutely crazy. And like Kaz can't be close to people. He can't touch people. That's why he wears gloves all the time because it just reminds him of carrying his brother's corpse. So that was like just a really like a really crazy scene and the fact that he was willing to work on it for Inej was really really beautiful and then the ending between them was probably my favorite of like anything. I loved that he went out of his way. He bought a boat for her that said the wraith on the side which is so cute since that was what she was known as um and but then he also found her parents like he brought her family back to her and that was just like I just started crying at that point too because I was like, oh my god, that is love. Like for him to for him to track them down and to do that and to bring them to her, like I just was blown away. So I think that those are all my thoughts that I had for Crooked Kingdom. There were definitely more of them, and there were definitely things earlier in the plot that happened, but these were like the most powerful moments to me that I just needed to like gush about. So that is my review. Let me know what you thought of Crooked Kingdom because it was just so good. And then also I really wanted to show you guys, um, I, I ended up just loving this so much that um, I bought this pillow from Evie Bookish's shop on Society6. It is a Six of Crows pillow and it says no mourners, no funerals, Six of Crows, Libra do go and it has skyline down here and it has like the crow feathers and I just think that it's so beautiful. I posted a photo of it on my Instagram too and I'll link that down below. But those were all of my thoughts. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you are enjoying that I'm going to be doing more book reviews going forward. I am so used to writing them so doing the video is new to me for like a full review but I kind of like it. I like the kind of stream of consciousness that goes into it as opposed to like thinking out every word. It feels more like personal and real. That was all that I have for this video and I will see you guys soon with a new one. Bye!